All right, if you guys are planning to sell your home in the next 12 months, this video is for you. There's a lot of things that people need to do to prepare with staging and just getting your home ready for photos and videos and showings and all the people that are gonna be touring your home. So I'm gonna give you the top five things to do to prepare your home to stage. Let's kind of dive into number one real quick. So big thing number one, and I think this is kind of obvious that I'm gonna say it because I still see listing photos that don't do this, and that is to declutter and clean your house. Uh, like I said, it seems like an obvious fact, but for some reason we still see listings and I'll tour them with clients where they're just filthy and they need a lot of cleaning. And so for you as the seller and also for any agents watching this, this is a must do. Number one, you must hire a professional cleaner or do a big scrub down of your whole house. It doesn't necessarily mean you need to get in the nitty gritty and do all the blinds necessarily unless they're really filthy, but you do need to wipe down everything Take everything off the countertops, all the bathroom countertops, all the tops of your furniture, like your TV stands and your nightstands, your dressers, everything needs to come off basically and go inside of a drawer and then put it away, clean it down, wipe it off. Uh, it just needs to feel clean and spacious. And then with the decluttering, same thing. Everything should come off of those surfaces and kind of stay off except for one to two items per piece of furniture. So when I'm staging a home, really on a nightstand, I'm looking for a lamp, a candle, maybe an alarm clock, and that is it. I don't wanna see a stack of books. I don't wanna see someone's mouth guard. I don't wanna see their glasses. All of that little stuff should be tucked away. And then when it comes to living room spaces and kitchens, really less is more. So just getting it down to the basics so that it feels like it's spacious. You want your home to feel like there's storage and ability for someone to move in versus if you keep it cluttered and dirty, someone's gonna come in and think, oh my gosh, there's not any room for here. They're obviously outgrowing this space. It's too small for me too. So make sure that we're definitely cleaning properly and decluttering as much as possible when you're getting your home ready for sale. Tip number two when you're staging your home for sale is to create open spaces. So what do I mean by that? I mean simply going into a room, and this is hard for some people to do if you've been in a home for a long time and your imagination might just be stuck to where your furniture is currently at, but I want you to kind of take a step back and look at the room as it is, and I want you to see, is the furniture arrangement to make an open space? Or have I arranged furniture to create little mini blocks and it's really segmented and furniture makes you walk around it now? As a stager, I come in and I say, mm, I need larger spaces. So I'm gonna make sure things are mostly against the walls. I'm gonna make sure that there's a good flowing walking path through the home. And it's really important that, again, someone comes in and they feel like it's spacious, that there's more than enough room for their stuff, especially to give them a little bit of imagination of, man, I have a big entertainment center. Is it gonna fit on this wall? We wanna make sure that there's open spaces for them to see that versus if you have five, six, seven bookcases full of DVDs and collectibles, it's gonna look really cluttered and it's gonna have a hard time for that buyer to relate to that space. Tip number three when you're preparing your home to stage for a sale is to draw people's eyes up. And for some people this can be challenging too, but really it's gonna come into the artwork and your windows. So again, with a, a really cluttered place, a lot of the times our eyes are gonna go to the clutter. We're gonna be looking at the stack of books in the corner or the boxes over here that you're preparing to move or whatever is distracting us down below. But if we can draw our eyes up, maybe that's installing the curtains a little bit higher to the ceiling. That's a great trick of the trade to do that and lift your eyes up in the room. Having the artwork definitely at or above eye level is another trick. So behind the sofa, above the bed, when you're walking into the kitchen area, making sure that your eye is drawn up, again, makes it feel bigger and more spacious. It's kind of a trick you can do for people. And it's a strategy we use every time we stage a home. We're just trying to make it open, make it spacious, and keep our eyes up so that they're focused on the landscape of the room. Tip number four is gonna be to help bring some inspiration and some creativity to the way that we stage. So there are some stagers who are simple. That's the best way to put it. It's just the bare necessities, check the box, there's furniture in the room, and you get what you pay for. On the other hand, we call lifestyle staging, which is where you're bringing in ingredients that are really gonna invite that imagination, um, allow the buyer to see themselves living in the space, Things like coffee mugs on the counter or having an open cookbook on the counter with a little trivet so it looks like someone was there cooking. Maybe there's a honey jar on the side. Definitely things in the bathroom like candles and rolled towels that make it feel kind of like a hotel where you just wanna come in and you're ready to wash your hands. There are so many simple tactics to do. One of the tricks we usually do too in the bedrooms is an open book on the nightstand or a journal with a pen. Again, just ways that make it feel like someone's actually living there or that you could envision yourself living there versus a very basic standard stager is just gonna put two chairs and a bed and call it good. 
and there's none of the little detailed props. So I'm gonna show you some good B-roll of this house we're in today. This is one of our listings in Eva Beach, and I hired our staging company to come through and just give that lifestyle imagination. It was really important to us that we allow people to envision how it would be like living here and all the different ways they can entertain once they own this home. Last tip of the five things to do to stage your home for sale is to obviously hire a professional stager. And for some, I can see the objections here, right? They think they're a good interior designer, they have a decor taste, and yes, that's true. But let's think about it logistically for a second. So you're preparing your home for sale, which means you need to pack up everything that you own, or we're gonna hopefully stage it to our own sense with everything that we have ourselves. And then you're in this like weird medium once you get an accepted contract of keeping the house looking good for the appraiser, but you're also trying to pack up your house to go, which can be a little bit hard. Second reason is that a stager has all of this stuff ready to go. They buy things specifically to sell houses for sale, very strategic props and items that are just gonna help, again, bring that imagination in and you don't have to lift a finger. So you can work with your realtor to cover this cost. It's not something that you necessarily have to pay out of pocket as the seller. The realtor can hire them, um, usually have really good working relationships with a couple of stagers to give the best price and the best what you get. So it's really trying to present that home for sale again. But hiring that professional stager, they are the experts. They are in and out of different houses every single day, working with different clients, different atmospheres, different styles. And so they're just gonna have the biggest stock of options, right? Versus if it's you, you're probably gonna be trying to go to Ross and to Target and end up spending $300, 400 plus all the time it's gonna take you to get all these items. And at the end of the day, just leave it to the professionals. This is what they're paid for. They create businesses around this. And I can tell you firsthand, this used to be my company, this is what I did. It is a needed thing and there is such a difference between homes that are listed with a stager and homes that are not, and the price value that a seller is able to get because of that imagination buyers are having. Those are my top five things to prepare your home for a sale with a stager. Those are the secrets that we use. Um, my name's Marina, I'm a realtor here on the island. I do this all day, every day, and help our sellers get the most money in the quickest amount of time. And I would love to chat with you. Like I said, if you guys are looking to sell in the next 12 months, Let's have that initial conversation. It doesn't mean we need to sell tomorrow. It means get some information, get educated on the process again if it's been a minute, and just kind of lay out the roadmap. What does it look like to sell? What's our net payoff potentially? How are we looking with the timeline and how the market's acting right now? And we can just give you a good broad spectrum of what it's looking like and advise you on how to do those first steps. So be sure to hit that subscribe and like, and I'll see you guys soon.